What's good? Hit that like button, share, subscribe. You rocking with the one and only. We have a very special one today. Once again, Shaq says, I have failed many times. And he said he makes mistakes. He said from age 19 to 26, he's, he became came better because of, because of due diligence. That's something we all got to give. That alone, that didn't need me to interpret. He set that out for you. Due diligence is what it takes for you as a young man, young woman to come up into adulthood. It takes due diligence in what you want to do, due diligence in pursuing what it is you are. Same thing I used to come up and I taught other kids to use because I showed them what God put in my path and he taught me. God teaches us. God's the real savage. Let's get it. All right, we're starting here at Psalm 69. To the chief musician upon Shoshinanim, a Psalm of David. Save me, O God, right there off the rip. That's how you want to think. Save me, O God. Through all things you go through, save me, God. When you think that way, move that way through all things. It could be something petty. I don't care. And people want to laugh, but I'm going to say it right now. I don't care if you're missing your candy bar. Help Save me, oh God, help me. Lord will lead you to find it. And you'll be like, wow, God, I'm shocked you helped me do that. Something so simple. When you talk, God wants you to call on him for the simple things because when the big things happen, he'll handle it automatically. You got to call on them for the little things for them to handle the big things because you only call on them for the big things that you know for a fact you can't handle, which disrespects our most high God because you're not seeking him. You seek him 24, 7, 365, not just when something's wrong. Seek him all the time. You go to God for everything. Didn't I say everything? Food, water, whatever it is. Don't just call on them when you need it. Call on them when you have abundance. So say, thank you, Lord. Give me more. I'll take it. Talk to God with respect like that. And God will hear. He will react. Watch. We're getting there. All right. Let's go. Say me, oh God, for the waters. The waters are come in unto my soul. Unto, unto the waters where the floods overflow me right now. You don't want to be overtaken by water, overtaken by your things going on in life, overtaken by tribulation. We're going through it, but you don't want to be overtaken. You don't want it overflowing you, drowning you. You want God to be there to levy it out. If God's not there with you, it's going to overtake you. It's going to overflow, drown you, drown you in debt, drown you in issue, drown you in I don't know what to do, drown you in you don't know who to go to, drown you in worry, drown you in... And let me say this, we're getting there. It's a sin to worry. Yes, worrying about anything is a sin. And we're getting to that type mindset because you're not relying on God. You're not seeking him. I'm telling you what it is. It's very clear. All of it is repeating, but it's how you do it. And we're discussing the mannerisms in which you do it that are pleasing to God, pleasing God. That's what we're talking about. All right, let's go. I'm weary of my crying. My throat is dried. My eyes fail while I wait for my God. We're waiting on the Lord. Again, through your tribulation, we're waiting. They that hate me without a cause are more than the hairs of my of mine head. They that would destroy me being mine enemies wrongfully. They're wrongfully enemies. We're persecuted wrongfully. They're doing it wrong in negativity because they hate. They do it because they don't like you. They persecute you because they got an issue with your character that may not be bad, but it's a problem for them. Let's go without a cause. Are more than the hairs of mine head. And there's a lot of people that end up hating you. There's a lot of people that dislike me for no reason. I just praise God for no reason at all. But it's going to show out. Watch. We're getting there. Let me let's go. Wrongfully are my are mighty then. Oh, hold on. Without a cause or more than the hairs of mine head. They that would destroy me being mine enemies wrongfully are mighty. Then I restored that which I had took not away. Oh, God, thou knowest my foolishness right there. They're like, I stuck in there fighting and I didn't rely on you. You know how I be, Lord. Just right there, it's clear. You know how it is, God. You know, I tried to do it the way that I thought was right, and I didn't rely on the way you showed me. But, Lord, look, I'm calling to you now. Watch. We're getting there. All of it matches every single day. Okay? It's not a joke. Almighty, then I restored 
then then I'm going to let you know how I know it is because there's a, another comparison. So recently, Miss O'Neill put up a story too. I have no problem with reading, but I'll tell you what my issue is at the end. And Miss O'Neill has a lot to do with that pastor beside you. And he could tell you after I tell you. He'll tell you by scripture when I finish, right? Because he knows, he knows the word of God, right? So he's going to be able to tell you. All right. Which I took not away, O God. Thou knowest my foolishness and my sins are not hid from thee. Because he sees all things, knows all things. All in all, O Lord God of hosts, be ashamed for my sake. Let not them that wait on thee, Lord God of hosts, let not those that seek thee be confounded for my sake. Right now, don't let them be found in any type of joy at my pain. Like there's people that look for when you're in pain. When they see you're in pain, they'll laugh. Even on the drive-by, they'll laugh. But when they're always, but you'll notice they're always going through turmoil. But they're, they'll find joy out of joy out of your turmoil. Like literally, their tribulation ain't a joke. They'll tell you my pain ain't a joke, but they'll find a snicker at your pain because they're wicked. That's how people be. It, it don't make sense. They want you to understand them, but they don't want to understand you right there. They're not seeking to understand God, wisdom, or anything. They're seeking self. They're seeking their self. Confound it for my sake, O God of Israel, because for thy sake I have borne reproach right there. Hold on now. Now we're, this is a little different because now we're calling out to God, but we're like, look, God, yeah, I got stuff happening to me. Tribulation, remember? They were in peril, but hey, it's not I'm in peril, Lord. It's I'm in peril because of me serving you right there because I worship the Lord God of hosts named Jesus Christ. I'm in peril, God of Israel. Look, I'm being persecuted and reproached. Like, remember, the, the devil reproacheth against us because he lies on us to God day and night when we're not seeking God and honesty and truth for him to look at him and say, you lie. My son didn't do that. Oh, oh. Okay, I'll come back. I'll let you know what he did. Okay, you come back then. God knows what we really did. He saw it because he's the witness. He's a second witness. He saw us, but he wants us to seek him. Therefore, he said, I saw him. Therefore, he sought me. That's my son. That's my daughter. Don't lie. Right there, deceiver. You can't deceive me. I'm God. And that's how he talks to him. Only when you're seeking him. And what? What are we doing? Honesty. And truth, right there. That's the only way you can get out the devil's lies. The only way you can get out the plot of the devil. So if you're not seeking God, you're the fault. You're the reason nothing well is happening. You're the reason bad's coming because you're not seeking God at all. You're seeking yourself. As I said before, tagging this, not hid from thee, O Lord God of hosts. Be ashamed for my sake and let not them that wait on thee. Lord of Lord God of hosts, let not those that seek thee be confounded for my sake, God of Israel, because for thy sake I have borne reproach. Shame hath covered my face. I am become a stranger unto my brethren and an alien unto my mother's children. Right there. You became, yo, right there, your word play. A born reproach. So that means everyone looking at me off the rip, they're just like, oh, that guy's a problem. Just like they're saying, or not even knowing you, just seeing you saying, oh, you're a problem. Oh, you're not, you're like just bashing you, judging you unrighteously off the rip. When they look at you, that's bo a born reproach to you. Now imagine that to your brethren, people that are important to you. Now you're a born reproach. Like even that happens to me with certain people. Certain folk look at me as a reproach. Oh, you're you're crazy. You're this. You're that. You're confused. You're this. You're that. Like you're a reproach. They're not even seeking God at the length to look at you and righteously judge it to say, hey, now, hey, now, what scripture are you reading? Hey, now, we're in the book is just saying that they're not seeking it like that. They're just like you're crazy right there, being dismissive to someone against people. Now they're going to be dismissive against us saying Jesus Christ is real. They're going to be dismissive. But when the time comes and it comes time for heaven or hell, you're going to go to hell. You're going to be mad. You're going to be, oh, Lord, they're confounded against me, oh, Lord. Oh, but you never seek me. Stop lying by scripture. You can't lie. They're going to lie. 
because they got the wickedness, the tongue, lips of the deceiver were getting there. They got deceiver lips and they lie and they're going to lie on us. When we try to be honest, God's is not going to buy it. He's going to call them out. Only when you seek them in honesty and truth. That's why we all got to seek the Lord, thy God, Jesus Christ. So he knows us. It's not only the devil, it's the other people around us. Come on now. And a stranger. What would he say about a strange woman? That's the deceiver. Yo, what? Right here. It says, I am become a stranger. That means you become as Ephesians 5.11 like the devil. Right there. And it's realizing it. Because listen, the person saying it, they know what they are. And they're confessing it. An honest confession before the lord you don't confess before a pope before a man you don't confess before man you confess all things before god in prayer and there is where you're established renewed restored right there not before man any man saying they could restore you they're of the devil right there so if mr pope you're saying oh i could bless you i could restore you you're of the devil. If that's what you're telling people, I don't know. I don't know what you say to people, but if that's what you are saying, if that's what's saying, then that's of the devil by scripture. Man, right there, nigga. Stop playing with me, yo. Y'all better stop playing because I don't care what title you got. I'll snatch you down. What did I say? I'll pull you down. We're to the pulling down of strongholds. The pulling down will take you down in the spirit. Well, I'm not talking about here. He's looking down. You'll go down in the spirit. Anything you think you got, I'll take it and make people see the devil in you. You devilish man. Honor the Lord thy God now or perish. Make a choice because you're on the clock. Yeah, you Man, are on the clock, nigga. You, boy, on the clock. Day and night, it's coming. Let's go, y'all. Because these suckers going to go. Y'all going to go. I don't mean go somewhere, not go out for a party, not go out shopping. I mean go. Go where you need to go. To the pits. That's where y'all need to be. The pits. Y'all filthy and ignorant. We're the pits of hell. Find it. I'll help you. You need help? I'll start the Psalms. You want to play? I'll start the Psalms. Stop. Subvert yourself. Subvert. Stop having to bow to statues. You filthy animal. You're disgusting. I made sackcloth also my garment, and I became a proverb to, unto them. The, this, these wicked dudes are going to be a proverb. I'm going to be talking to my homie when we make it into the kingdom. Like, yo, you remember that Pope guy? What's a Pope? You remember that pastor that thought he was mighty? You remember that guy judging sins? Remember that guy with the signs? We'll be laughing at you. You're a joke. You'll be a laughing matter. You're not reproached to us. We know the truth. You're sinning yourself. Right there. You're a stranger. You're a strange person. You're strangers. Move around, stranger. Move here, stranger. Move by side, stranger. I don't want you in my way. Move. Boy, move. Fast. And I mean this so crazy. I mean, you better move around. You better move around. Fast. Because y'all doing the devil's work. Very crazy. Y'all working hard. We about to step it up. Y'all, I said my brother's in position. Didn't I say that? You, yo. This nigga think I'm play, play with it. You think I'm playing. They're in position. Hold your neck up. They that sit in the gate speak against me. You speak against God? What? Sitting in your holy seat by a gate? It's not the gate for God. You want me to tell them what gate it is? Huh? Crazy. Oh, praise the most I got. These dudes done. Y'all done. We in here. Y'all done. We got the world. We in the world. We around. 
You're done. Wicked people. Y'all evil. Y'all done. I see y'all, dog. I see they do, yo, they do so many rituals. I'm sick of it. Yo, they do rituals day and night, y'all. I'm sick of it. They're done. Y'all don't need your health. Why do y'all have your health? For what, Lord? Then we about to do analysis of your breath. All them that did that ritual, Lord, let's go. All them. They that sit in the gate speak against me. And I was the song of the drunkards. But as for me, my prayer is unto thee, O Lord, in an acceptable time, O God. And the multitude of thy mercy hear me and the truth of thy salvation right there. Jesus Christ is the truth. He's the way, the truth, and the light. Here we come, John 14, 6. I ain't forgot. Here we come in Hebrews 11. I ain't forgot. We coming. And it's about to be real serious, not a game. You guys got to read Psalm 69, verse 14 to 36. Psalm 69, verse 14 to 36. Now I got one for you. I'm going to read 33. For the Lord heareth the poor and despiseth not his prisoners. Whoa. All you dudes who don't choose him, he ain't going to feel bad for you. You're going to be begging. He's not going to care. You didn't listen now. Just go. I told you, go. Burn. Enjoy your burning. Burn. And make sure you burn faster. You got to burn fast. Burn fast. So you're... All right, never mind. Y'all don't even read. Let's go. Time for Proverbs 17. Starting at the 14th to the 28th. The beginning of strife. Is as when one telleth out waters, therefore leave of contention. Yo, when people got contention, do they want to be around before it is it be meddled with? Right there, before the deceiver lies on you. Find Jesus before he lies. Right there, before you get embarrassed because you never did the sin he says. Before you get exposed for something you never did. Find God right now. What's confusing? Find the Lord thy God or let the devil lie on you. He's going to lie on you right there. What? Before it be meddled with. They both are abomination to the Lord. So therefore, Satan's an abomination. Now, so are you because you never seek them. Yo. Oh, what verse? Matthew 6.33. Never seek them. Right there. What? <laughs> and he that condemneth, he, yo, right there, yo, hold, what? Hold on, let me run that back. He that justifieth the wicked, and he that condemneth, he, the just, even they both are abomination to the Lord. Right there. Wherefore is The price, they're a price in the hand of a fool to get wisdom. How are you going to get it? He don't know God. See, he has no heart to it. He ain't got no heart. He's not a real man. A friend loveth at all times, and a brother is born for adversity. Facts. A man void of, a man void of understanding, uh, Striketh hands and becometh surety in the presence of his friend. He's sure to get you in trouble. That friend's surely going to mess something up. You can't count on them to do anything that's going to make be profitable. How? They're going to be known to mess up something. That type of friend. Come on, we all know people like that. Oh, what? He loveth transgression that loveth strife. And he that exalteth his hate seeketh destruction. These dudes think that, yo, there just was a hate pride march. In my city, there was a hate march. You are going to perish, all of you. But then they were scared after. Because then the gangsters came out on the city, went searching at night. No one could find them. Nobody could find these dudes. Let me ask. If in the daylight they were marching, hating, hating on people that weren't like them, how come we couldn't find you in the daytime? You are nowhere to be found 
because they were hiding. They were in a disguise. That's how the devil comes, in a disguise. They're cowards. They're all, I'm not going to curse, but they're all cowards. They're all cowards, all of them, all soft cowards and weaklings. Because when you look at a real man, I did stuff. My people did stuff. We were standing there smiling in the picture. These dudes ran. They ran, marched through the city like, we hate, we hate you. We love our pride. Where's your pride now when a day, when we come out looking for you? Where's your pride? You ran. You ran, suckers. Y'all ran. We have fold you, cats. We have fold you. You will fold like a paper. You will get folded. You guys are soft, hating people because of race. We have fold you, right on you. Send you back to your mommy. Send you back to your daddy. Send you back home. Folded. Written over. You guys didn't want to hang out there at night when all my folks were out there. You ran. You're cowards. All of you. Cowards. Ride out when my people out. Be out when we're out. Nigga. Right there. Y'all cowards. All y'all cowards. And we we started finding out who most of y'all are. God forbid. We woke up... My, my dudes, yo, we rock with the terrible one. We'll do you terrible. You tried to say racist stuff, hiding your face. Now we figure out who some of you are. Watch what happens when we meet up with some of them. And my, yo, I can command too. They think they bossing something, nigga. Then I'm a mega boss. Rocking with, you just seen the big boss rock with me. The biggest boss thus far, nigga. What you think? Phone call, just a call. That's all it is. You guys are wicked. And then there's little kids out and they're marching. Young African-American kids. What are they going to say to them? What? Y'all. That's all I got to say. Y'all. He, he loveth transgression that loveth strife. And he that exalteth his hate seeketh destruction. They, they're exalting hate. They're seeking their destruction. What did I say? They're about to get destroyed. We ain't playing with y'all niggas at all. Y'all get destroyed. Off the face of the earth. We destroy you niggas. Come out. Come out and play. Y'all won't. Y'all don't even know what's going on. Y'all won't. They won't. They're soft. Hate seeketh destruction. He that hath a froward heart findeth no good. And he that hath a perverse tongue falleth into mischief. He that begetteth a fool doeth it to his sorrow. And the father of a fool hath no joy. He doesn't even have joy in his life. He's, he doesn't even like his own life because the dude's a fool. His son's a fool. He, his son's not smart. He's like, oh, man, this guy again. And that's what he normally says, this guy again. That's all the dad's saying because the dude's just a screw up. <laughs> right there. That begetteth a fool, do it to his sorrow. And the father of a fool hath no joy. A merry heart doeth good like a, med a medicine but a broken spirit drive the bones. Makes you easily broken. Yo. What? Billy Carson, did you read this? Billy, paging Billy. Did you read this Bible? Did you read this whole book? What are you talking about? Did you read this whole book, clown? Did you read the Bible? You clown, you clown ass nigga. Did you read the Bible? Because you're the one denying it. Did you read the Bible? Somebody should smack you up. You're not smart. You're not smart. You're lying. Guys, he's blatantly going on saying Jesus Christ ain't real. That's against the religion. That's against God. That's against principle. That's against manhood. You're not a man, Nick. Where's your manhood? Where's your manhood? You don't got it. Because you're up here saying God ain't real. He ain't this, he ain't that. But you ain't never read this. You're a liar. Lying. A merry heart doeth good like a medicine, but a broken spirit... Drop the bones. A wicked man taketh a gift out of the bosom to pervert the ways of judgment. Billy Carson, right there. Perverted his judgment. Taking all the knowledge all around. Let's go. Right there, that's you, Billy. Right here. Proverbs 
17, that's you, Billy Boy. That's you, nigga. That's you. Every verse, you. Every verse is you. Right there, nigga. That's you. That's what you do. Dry bones. Call Bill, yo, call him dry bones. That's all he is, dry bones. You a bum. Denying God. Perverted judgments. Wisdom before him that hath understanding. But the eyes of a fool are to the ends of the earth. Billy Carson looking, checking out the whole earth. When God's right here looking at him while he's like Scooby-Doo looking for the mystery. God's looking right at him. Like, what are you doing? What, where are you going? What, what? He's like, Billy, what are you doing? Billy's still searching. Where are them tablets? Where's the tablets at? Wait, give me that ancient tablet. Can't even read them. Can't read one of them. Give me that tablet. Oh, Sumerian, cuneiform. I maybe know a few people. Yo, right there, type nigga, right there. <laughs> oh, praise the most high God. What are you doing, nigga? What are you doing, Billy Carson? He's right here. He's right there. I'm, he's chilling with me. We're laughing at you. We're laughing. You're funny to us. You're fun Then you're still going to go to hell. He's still going to go to hell, y'all, because he doesn't want to find Jesus. Goodbye, Billy Carson. Bye, nigga. Peace. When you're going, bye. B, be out. <laughs> Wisdom before him that hath understanding, but the eyes of a fool are to the ends of the earth. The foolish son, oh, a foolish son is a grief to his father and bitterness to her that bear him. Also, to punish the just is not good, nor to strike one. Princes for equity. Yo. These dudes trying to get at these rappers. Yo, honestly, we got to say, we got to keep it real. We can't expect a rich man to be equal to us. But you will be of equity to the works of God. So when my brother, my brethren like Adept and Battle Troop are judging you righteously, that's righteous. They're judging you by the Bible. They're not judging you by your money. They don't care about your money. We're not having a money fight. With a celebrity. We're having a fight about your lifestyle. Your life, the things you do that are wicked. We're trying to inform you. Hey, stop it. That's what we do. We're reprovers, nigga. Right there. Before him that hath understanding, but the eyes of a fool are in the ends of the earth. A foolish man is a grief to his father and bitterness to her that bear him. Also, to punish the just is not good nor to strike princes for equity he that hath knowledge he speaketh he spit he spareth his words and a man of understanding is of an excellent spirit even his lips esteem and a man of understanding right there right there yo you guys gotta read proverbs chapter one to two um Oh, excuse me. Chapter 18, verse 1 to 24. Proverbs chapter 18, verse 1 to 24. And I have 21. Death and life are in the power of the tongue, and they that love it shall eat the fruit thereof. Whoa! So whoever's choosing the terrors of the shadow of death are going to get death. They're look, They're not, those not even looking to join because they're rejects. They're going to get death. We're not. We're going to find life in Christ right there. So you got to read, again, Proverbs chapter 18, verse 1 to 24. All right, here we go. The crux for Shaquille O'Neal, my nigga. Let's get it. First Samuel chapter 12, starting at the 14th. Oh, excuse me, at the 4th. Starting at the 4th. The bows of the mighty men are broken, and they that stumbled are girded up with strength. Right there, because they got God. God's with them, girding them up. They that were full have hired out themselves for bread. Right there, yo. Guys who, who are, are too busy seeking after what they want and not God are literally selling their own self out for not a price worth it just to eat. But God said he provides you with food and your necessities. So why are they doing what they're doing just to get food? Yo, let's go. That's what these dudes do because they don't find God. They do in their own power. And their own power is just enough to eat. 
Just enough to put food on the table and no more because they're not seeking God. They're not seeking the most high God by scripture. Let's go because this gets crazy. And they that were hungry ceased. <laughs> Yo, because these dudes threw themselves out there for something that wasn't worth it. The dudes who were starving find the understanding because they're seeking what? In honesty and truth. Yo, nigga. Right there. So that the barren hath born seven, and she that hath many children has is waxed feeble. The Lord killeth and maketh alive. Right, yo. Feeble? Yes, yeah, she built the army, but what are they going to become? They're feeble before you give them what? Meat. What's meat? The word of God. Yo, nigga, how is this confusing? The children are born. Thank you, Jesus. They're seven because God blessed them to be alive. So what do you do next? You teach them what? The word of God right there. Where's the confusion? We're I'm in the comments right now. What verse was confusing? Okay. I need to know right now. I need to know right now what verse confused anyone. It's cut and dry. Jesus Christ is Lord of Lords, King of Kings. We're getting there. And she that hath many children is waxed feeble. The Lord killeth and make alive, maketh alive. He bringeth down to the grave and bringeth up. So if somebody passed away, God allows it. You can't die without God letting you. God allows it. What? The Lord maketh poor and maketh rich. What did I say? The Lord chooses who's rich. He bringeth, he bringeth low and lifteth up the beggar from the dunghill. The beggar, the guy who was begging to get scraps in the deceiver's realm, seeking Jesus, finds growth, and he brings them up from the dunghill. What is that? Crap. What is the deceiver? Crap. What? Because why? He's a liar. Because he does what? Utterances against what? Falsely, the deceiver lies against who? Us! To set them <laughs> from the dunghill, to set them among princes. Whoa! And to make them inherit the throne of glory. God brings up dudes who are nothing and makes them kings. Nothing to something from God. So if you are something in this world, God did it. God, the most high God did it. Not you. God. Right there. <laughs> For the pillars of the earth. What? Are the Lord's. And he hath set the world upon them. He put the world on the pillars of the earth. So what did I say? We own it. He will keep. He will keep the feet of his saints and the wicked shall be silent. In darkness, when you guys go to hell, try and be quiet. Play that game. Play that. Try that game. Be quiet in hell. Play that new. Do that new challenge. Be quiet in hell. Wicked man. Do that new challenge. Quietness in hell. Fire. You can't. You won't. <laughs> in darkness. For by strength shall no man prevail. The adversaries of the Lord shall be broken to pieces. Out of heaven shall be thunder upon them. The Lord shall judge the. What? The Lord shall judge the ends of the earth. He's going to judge the ends of the earth itself. God's going to judge everything to the earth itself. <laughs> All praise the most I got. Jesus Christ right now. Right now. He's going to judge the earth itself and everything in it. 
What? What? Right, yo, just that alone. Stop playing with me. Stop playing. I don't want to hear Muhammad, nobody, nothing. Jesus Christ is Lord of Lords, King of Kings. For by strength shall no man prevail. The adversaries of the Lord shall be broken to pieces. Out of the heaven shall be thunder upon them. The Lord shall judge the ends of the earth. And he shall give strength unto his king. And exalt the horn of his anointed. And Elkanah went to Ramah to his house. And the child did minister unto the Lord before Eli the priest right there. No pastor can tell me I'm not worthy to do what I'm doing at all. If, yo, a child ministered to God. Stop it. Y'all done. And I seen the way y'all didn't do your job. That's your little career. Y'all didn't do it. And I'm getting there. I, Shaq, I'm getting there. I'm getting there. I'm getting there, Shaq. I got you. Because right, I know what you're thinking. I got you, man. I got you. And that was before Eli. On the son, the sons of Eli were sons of Belial. <laughs> they know not the Lord and the priest custom with the people was that when any man offered sacrifice, the priest's servant came while the flesh was in seething. So while the flesh was being cleaned and re prepared to eat, the priest came in because he's ready to eat. He's ready to eat. He just preached. He's ready to go. And real quick, yo, I'm going to say this real quick before I get to it, Shaq. One second. You guys understand that he has sons of Bilal. Just because he believed in God didn't mean his sons did, but he stood righteously, even though his sons did not. And God honored him. So that his son stayed alive because of that. You're saying, why weren't the sons dead? Because his father honored God. So because of that, he preserved the life of his kids. Right there. When you're as a parent, you got to worship God to preserve the life of your kids. God keeps them alive because you worship him in honesty and truth. If you don't, he'll take your kids out and not care. He don't care. I just read him not caring. That's how you're going to treat your kid. Doesn't matter to him. If you're wicked or or you're not seeking after God. Either or. Either you're wicked or you're not seeking for God. Even though his sons are Belial, he was seeking God. Eli was. And they knew not the Lord. And the priest's custom with the people was that when any man offered sacrifice, the priest's servant came while the flesh was in seething with a flesh hook. And he took three teeth in his hand and he struck into the pan or kettle or cauldron right there. God's going to, yo, that's what's going to happen to the wicked. He's going to throw you down to hell like, he, like this priest did when he stuck his two teeth into the thing, the animal teeth in there, and pulled the food out. He's going to drop you in hell. And, you, and it's going to be torture. You're going to feel like you're getting pricked, stuck, poked. What did I say God does to the fat? He pokes it, prods it, be stabbing it. Like last year, he's not playing. Put it together or pot. All that the flesh hook brought up, the priest took for himself. All the sins that people do not repent for. All the people that do not find Jesus Christ will go to hell. All of you that don't find Christ, you will go to hell. You will. No questioning. You're going to hell. Find Jesus Christ or go to hell. Find Jesus or burn in hell. Like the cauldron burning the food. Burn in hell. Right there. By scripture. Burn in hell or find Christ. That's the only thing. Find Christ or go to hell and burn. Like the cauldron and food. Right there, nigga. Unto all the Israelites that came thither, 
also before they burnt the fat. You're going to burn in hell. What did I say? Before they burnt the fat. You're made of fat. <laughs> what? All praise the most I got. Jesus Christ right there. For the priest, for he will not have sodden the flesh of thee, but raw. Right there. Yo, to all you priests who don't follow God, it's going to be a, a rude awakening, a raw awakening when you're headed to hell because you judge sin. And God said, spread that he's the Messiah. Let them know Jesus Christ is real. That's all. You're not to judge nothing. But righteously, y'all gone. Y'all going to be left raw, burnt to the raw meat for eternity with the wicked people. And if any man said unto him, nay, <laughs> what, but thou shalt give it me now. And if not, I will take it by force. Wherefore the sin of young men what? Wherefore the sin of young men was very great before the Lord, for men abhor the offering of the Lord. Right, right there. When we're young, you don't like what God does. I told you my story, but when you seek Him and continue in tribulation in Jesus Christ, you find Him right there, and He. Blesses you. You become the blessed. How is this confusing? How? So you're no longer in very... Yo. So no longer is your tribulation very great. It's then not very great at all. It's not great at all. Because the Lord Jesus Christ is in control by scripture. All right. You guys got to read. Okay, I gave you the reading for that. Okay. And then, hold on. No. Let me see. Because I'm going to post the reading for this. For uh, 1 Samuel 12. I'm going to post that reading. Because I do have um verse 18 here. And I know it's to the next chapter. So it's going to be... I mean, it's to the end of the chapter. So it's going to be you starting at 18. And you're going to read from 18 to the very end of 1 Samuel cha chapter 2. You read from chapter 18 to the end. That's the start. That's what it is. Now I got 18. But Samuel ministered before the Lord, being, being a child girded with a linen of ephod right there. He was part of the blessed because his parents or whoever groomed them believed in God. He had a e part of the ephod tied around him. So he was already in with the blessed before he knew it. Right then, a lot, right there, a lot of you already were in the church before now. So therefore, it's time to get back to understanding God. Even though you're not at a church, your understanding should never depart. Because when you're learned as a child, it never departs from you. Right there. Now, Miss Shawnee O'Neill, I saw you posted a story. Ma'am, you are a divorced woman. Pastor, that got with her. You're, are you married with her? Because you know that after a woman's divorce, there are certain ways you're supposed to do it. You got divorced, Pastor. Right there. You're supposed to be, if you're going to be in a blended family, you got to do things righteous. Are you married to her? Are you doing things right? What are you doing to make a difference from what you were doing? Because you just got divorced, went to the next relationship. It may be better for you, for you, but is it better for her? Because now she's divorced. And now because she's divorced, she can't get back with him. And you're like, okay, I'm here. Are you married? Are you doing things righteously? Are you fornicating? You're a pastor. You're a pastor. What are you doing? Are you doing the right thing? Why aren't you married then? So, pastor, are you even able to marry a divorced woman as a divorced pastor? Do you Are you following the word of God as a pastor? This is what I'm saying. Shaq, you get what I'm saying? These dudes, he's a pastor. He should know what to do. But uh, he's indoctrinated. I'm not. 
But look, look at how they do. This is why you got to rely on God. Rely on God, Shaq. Yo, stick with the most high God. Stay with him, yo. Righteously. Judging righteously. Because even though y'all got that story, yo, I can't do the unrighteous thing. You're not married. You're still donning Shaq's last name. Why you got Shaq's last name and you're not married? Why you wearing it? Because then it's unrighteous. Ma'am, your story's unrighteous. All praise the most high God. You're donning a different last name. I mean, I write the same last name, but claiming a different last name. Excuse me. Right there, man. All praise the most high God. Let's get it. We in here.